Many years ago, when I was discerning my vocation, I was traveling around the world, and at the end of that trip, I went to a place called Madonna House in Combermere. Many people have heard about Madonna House, and one of the things I noticed on the walls when I went to the various rooms and gathering areas was the phrase or sign, I am third. And I wondered, gee, that's a very strange phrase. And then many years later, when Madonna House came to Vancouver and they had a little house, they had the same message, I am third. I want to come back to this later on in the homily. Today we celebrate in the gospel the transfiguration of Jesus. We've moved from the desert wilderness where Jesus seems to be, well, in a different tough place, to a place on the mountain where he's gone from the valley and the desert to the glorious brilliance of the mountain top. And he is with his uh, three disciples who are very close to him. And so what is this about? Well, we see Jesus in a state of brilliance, glorious brilliance. We see him in a place of union with God the Father. Because we hear this great phrase on the mountaintop, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. And one of the great reflections over many years of the church reflecting on this is we not only see Jesus in terms of who he fully is, but we see the goal of the Christian life, to be transformed and to be glorious. But it does beg the question, what does it mean to be transformed and glorious? I mean, we, we, theologically we know that Jesus is the new Adam. He shows to us what it truly means to be glorious and, the, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. We also see him meeting Moses and Elijah, the great figures of the Old Testament. You know, the great figure of Moses, the lawgiver, and Jesus comes to complete and fulfill all of the law of the Old Testament. We also see the prophet of prophets, Elijah. Many prophets said God will fulfill his promise and Elijah represents the prophet of prophets. However, there is also a great, great teaching that comes from the transfiguration. And it's the teaching of what it means to realize our destiny in Jesus. We are called to be like Christ. And this can be hard to believe. You know, I, if I may share one of the things I hear a lot, especially in Lent, during confession, or the odd time when people share with me their thoughts about the Lenten challenge and how they're doing in their life, I will hear a phrase that goes something like this. Bishop Mark, one of the things that I struggle with is I am not worthy. And I really wonder uh, about, you know, sometimes on my lowest days, about how I'm really fulfilling my call as a Catholic and a Christian, because I don't feel very worthy. Well, I'll usually respond with something like, it's because we're not worthy that we are called together as the church to follow Christ. Because absolutely every one of us is a sinner. That's not being negative, but it means none of us is perfect. And yet Jesus comes and gives his life on the cross to call us to the opportunity, the way that he makes possible. The other problem would be if we don't see that we need help from God because we're already perfect. And of course, this is a bit of an illusion. And so uh, on this early day in the Lenten season, where we go from the valley to the mountaintop, we're in this place of tension if you will, between the valley and the mountaintop as we journey towards the Lord. You know, many of you have heard many phrases in the Christian life. 
And one of them is the great phrase that people know well from Catherine of Siena, one of the mystics of the church, who encourages the people of God to overcome fear and any limited view of what we're capable of in Christ. She has that famous statement, if you are what you should be, then you will set the world ablaze. Well, that is a wonderful phrase. How do we realize this? I point out in the gospel something that happened right away when the friends of Jesus are on the mountaintop and as soon as they see Jesus in his glorious brilliance, we hear, we see the phrase, when the disciples saw Jesus and heard this, the statement from God, this is my beloved son, listen to him, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. You know, there's many problems in our lives that we ask God's healing from. And we come up with a list of sins often that include things like vanity or insecurity or uh, uh, undue unhealthy pride. You know, the addictive patterns in our life, our inability to use language and, and, and ways of conduct that build up our brothers and sisters versus tear them down. And that comes out especially with relationships closest to us. But many theologians reflect on the root sin, which they call fear, and that sort of spurs so many other things. Perfect love casts out all fear. How many times did Jesus say in the gospel, be not afraid? And so may I suggest, one of the great prayers during the Lenten season is the prayer asking the Lord for the grace to trust, to restore trust. Isn't it fascinating how many things in our lives today take away trust, mitigate trust? All you have to do is read, you know, five minutes of news, and there are so many things that take away trust. One of the great calls, the greatest call in the spiritual life is restoration of relationship with God ultimately. And that affects everything else. It affects our relationship with others. It affects our relationship in all the world. And of course, it affects how we see ourselves relative to God. Ah, maybe now we're back to the wisdom of the statement in my early part of the homily. I am third. Because when I am first, well, I might neglect the one who ultimately can truly help me set the world ablaze and be all that I can be. The mystery of humility shows us many, many other facets of wisdom that uh, are endless in terms of what they affect. I am third because he is first. And when he is first, he shows me how I deal with all my relationships with others. And then I truly see myself in relationship to God in the world. And the opportunity to trust, to relationship yet again. And so I conclude my reflection today with a reflection from Pope Francis about the journey to the mountaintop. And may the journey to the mountaintop that we celebrate today, where we see the Lord Jesus in his brilliance, give us renewed hope for what it means to not only deal with every sin or problem in our life, but to restore trust and relationship in our hearts and in each other. And I must say, I thank the parish of Holy Family and the Diocese of Saskatoon for how the people of God continue to show me as a bishop what it means to live in right relationship. As the Pope says today, the point of arrival to which we are called is to see the brilliant luminous face of Jesus Christ. He is transfigured in him is salvation, is beatitude, is light and boundless love. By revealing the glory in this way, 
Jesus ensures that the cross, the trials, the difficulties, which we all struggle with, are resolved and are overcome by Easter. Thus, this Lent, let us go up to the mountain with Jesus. But what is our key way? With prayer. Let us climb the mountain with prayer, silent prayer, heartfelt prayer, prayer that always seeks the Lord. Let us pause for a time of reflection each day. Let us fix our inner gaze on him, his countenance, and let us allow his light to penetrate us and shine in our life. A blessed Lenten journey and season to you all.